Hi everyone, Harris here with iDownload Blog. So today we're taking a look at the iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max. Apple's latest and greatest flagship with the new dynamic island notch up top and a host of other new features. We're gonna take a look at how to use this phone, how the hardware works, how the software works, some great accessories for it, and finally some more advanced tips and tricks. I will leave the time markers down below. So if you wanna to click to a specific section, you can go right there. Let's go ahead and get started with the fundamentals of how to use this phone, starting with a hardware tour. So this phone is very similar to the past several generations of iPhones. On the right hand side of the device, you have a single button and this is your power button. Use this to turn the display on or off. And now with this phone, it never really goes fully off because it has an always on display, which you can disable, but you can see that you can lock it by pressing this side button. Now, if you hold this button, it'll launch Siri down at the bottom. So holding this button to the side, will pull up Siri on the very bottom. And from there, you can ask voice commands or do a lot of other things, which you're probably used to by this point. You can also double click this side button and this will pull up Apple Pay. So if you have an Apple card, or Apple Cash or any other credit cards or debit cards or really a lot of other things added to your Apple wallet. This is how you can get to it and pay for things with the mobile readers, which is something I use you know, almost every day. On the left-hand side of the device, you have your mute toggle. So this is how you turn your device from volume on to basically volume off um, or vibrate to sound. And you also have two volume buttons, which are very simple to use and understand. At the bottom you have your charging port, which again is lightning this year, as well as speakers and microphones down there. So important to keep those clean if you can, um, not getting them too dirty. And then on the back you have three cameras. You have your standard camera, you have your wide angle camera, and now you have your up to 48 megapixel uh, zoom camera with 3x optical zoom. You also have a LiDAR scanner here, which is used for certain augmented reality and depth scanning and things like that. that the average user um, probably won't explicitly ever use or, or be aware that they're using it. And then you have your flash and a microphone there. And then on the front, you have your new dynamic island. So this includes both the camera and the new display. So for instance, now if you start playing music and you leave the music app, the music will go up to the top and now you can see that you do have your music controls up there which you can tap on to get back into the settings so that is the dynamic island up top basically it just gives you uh, a little mini player for different applications that you can use quickly now there's several ways of unlocking your phone a common one is just to tap it you tap it it'll unlock just like that which is very simple and then to get into your phone you can see at the bottom it says swipe up to open so you do that and it'll scan your face and you can get into your device. Now once you're in your device, most of your operations do rely on the bottom of your display. So to go home from an application, you simply swipe up like that. To go back to a recent application, you can swipe back and forth to the left and right, which is very handy for going back and forth quickly between apps on the bottom. If you wanna see your recent applications, you can swipe up and hold and you'll just have to practice that motion. Swipe up and hold just like that. Now other navigation settings you have with your phone, if you swipe down from the top right hand corner, you get into your control center, which gives you quick access to different controls from brightness to volume to media. You can tap and hold this section to get into airdrop and hotspot. And then you have your do not disturb and focus settings down there. If you pull down from the middle, you get into your notification center. And then to do a screenshot, you're gonna hold the power button on the right, plus the up volume button at the same time and you can see you took a screenshot just like that, and you can go in, you can press the little pen icon if you wanna draw on it, otherwise you can delete it, share it, or click done, which gives you several options, including copying it now, which is new, you can copy this, and then it'll delete, and then you can paste it and send it somewhere else, or put it in you know, Photoshop or something like that. And if you want to power down your device, you do up volume button, down volume button, and then you hold down the power button, and there you can power off your device and then hold the power button to get it back on. All right, so now I think the most important thing to learn after this is how to customize your home screen so you can add and remove these fancy widgets and also now how to customize your lock screen because that is a brand new feature as well. So to do either of those things, you just hold down on your background and then it'll give you the option. So we'll do that again. So if you're in your lock screen like this, 
hold down and it'll give you the options to customize it. From there, you can create a new one like that, or you can press the plus button in the bottom right hand corner. Let's go ahead and create a new one. And there you can choose from some featured ones that Apple's made. You can choose a few different settings up top. So maybe you want it to just be color based and keep it kind of simple. You choose what color you want and it'll give you a, a great gradient. So I mean, this is just a, a fantastic feature. So we'll give it kind of this uh, orangish, peach-ish color, um, kind of red actually at the bottom. Okay, whatever. So then you can add widgets. So let's say at the bottom you want alarms because you wake up every morning and you need an alarm and weather because you check the weather. Um, and then let's see, can we get something calendar? All right, and we have a calendar there as well. And you customize what's up top. I like this, the date up top, but you could change that to a reminder, stocks, uh, more detailed weather, stuff like that. And you can change how the clock looks as well and the color and boom, you have a brand new lock screen just like that. So I'm gonna click add and you can set this for both your lock screen and your home screen by setting as wallpaper pair. Or if you want to make your own home screen, you can customize home screen down below. So I'm just gonna set set as wallpaper pair. And now my home screen and my lock screen both share that. Okay, but I wanna make one with the photos. So I'm gonna click photos and it's gonna pull up my recent photos so I can find one that I think would fit well. All right, I'm gonna do a picture of my dog. All right, so now I have a picture of my dog and Apple did this really intelligent thing of cutting out the background of this image. So you can see it has this uh, this shape going behind Onyx here, which just looks awesome. And you can swipe through and add different filters and stuff like that. But I mean, isn't this sweet? So um, if you use something with a clear subject, such as uh, uh, an animal or a human, um, it'll automatically crop. But you can just see how cool this is and you can kind of zoom in and out and cover up your text a little bit. So as you can see, if I bring it down a little bit, I can have the text slightly hiding behind Onyx, which I'm gonna keep because I think that looks awesome. And boom. Now as soon as you add other widgets, it gets rid of that feature. But I'll put that back so that I can have Onyx slightly above that. And I think that looks awesome. All right, so I'm gonna add that. But then the same thing goes for your home screen. If you tap and hold and you click the plus button, this lets you add a widget. So whatever widget you want, you know, I like calendar and reminders and some battery widgets, stuff like this. Uh, we'll just add stocks just for, we'll do weather actually. So click and hold and drag it and I can add it to my home screen or I can add it to a new page. You can also click the three little dots down below to enable and disable pages. So I could disable the second page of apps if I wanted to, I'll leave that there. Let's say I wanted a third page of apps. I would click and hold on that and then drag this to the right. And now I have a third page of apps. But if I wanna see all my apps, I can go to the far right where you have your library and there you can search for your apps or find them conveniently stored in different automatic folders. But that's basically how to customize your lock screen and your home screen, which is a really great feature. Well, next I wanna talk about accessories and there's kind of three categories. There's cases, there's MagSafe, and there's chargers. So quickly we'll start with chargers. There's a lot of different options. So for charging it up at something like um, a hotel room uh, or just a coffee shop or even just around the house, um, most people will just use the standard plug-in versions and Apple doesn't give you one, so you'll probably want a fast charger and a small fast charger. So I'll leave a couple linked down in the description if you want either of these small fast chargers just to maximize your charging speed because your iPhone can handle fast charging. So next I wanna talk about cases and MagSafe accessories since these can combine into one category. So ESR, who's a sponsor of this video, has a mission to level up your tech. And to do this, they have several MagSafe products which magnetically and automatically attach to your iPhone 14. First is the Halo Lock three in one, which lets you charge your phone, your Apple Watch, and your AirPods at the same time with a sleek and minimal charging dock, all using nice magnets to securely hold your phone. This actually features a CryoBoost fast charging technology, which utilizes a vent on the back to keep your phone and charger cool for maximum charging speeds and longevity. It allows you to turn off that blue charging indicator when you go to sleep so it doesn't keep you up at night. That's really great. 
Now they also have a wireless and portable option. The Halo Lock Kickstand Wireless Power Bank comes in at 5,000 and 10,000 milliamp hour battery sizes to automatically and wirelessly charge your iPhone on the go, but also prop up your phone with the kickstand. This can charge your phone on the go whenever you need it, but of course you can also plug it in and charge both your phone and a battery pack at the same time. But of course to protect your phone, you're gonna want probably a MagSafe case. So this is the classic kickstand case, which is a great clear case to protect your phone and also show off its new design, which cleverly uses the camera module to turn it into a kickstand. But of course, both of these come in MagSafe variants so that you can not only get the clear case, the protection, the kickstand, but then you can magnetically use it with their accessories. So these are all great products to charge your devices and keep them safe. So if you wanna check out any of these and more from ESR, check the link in the description and use my coupon code for 10% off. And you can combine that with a 10% coupon on the website for 20% off total. Next, I wanna go over some great tips and tricks. So by default, when you get this device, if you use password autofill, Apple wants to scan your face first to get into your password autofill. Although that has gotten a lot quicker, I still don't like doing that. So what I like to do is go into my face ID and passcode settings and turn off face ID for password autofill. So that way, when you go to autofill your password, it doesn't require you to scan your face anymore. and just allows you to autofill your password a little bit more quickly once you've already unlocked your phone. Now, a really cool feature with iOS 16 now is the ability to see your Wi-Fi password. So if you go into your Wi-Fi settings and click the little I button, you can now see your password right there. And if you tap and hold it, it'll scan your face ID and then it'll reveal your password, which then you can copy it and share it with someone else or write it down, do whatever you need. This is huge, especially if someone shares the Wi-Fi with you. It means you never learned it, but now you can see the Wi-Fi password right there. That's awesome. Now, if you go into sound and haptics and you go under keyboard feedback, you can now turn on haptic so that if you use your keyboard, you will now get a slight vibration or a slight little buzz when you use your keyboard, which is a nice satisfying experience on this phone. So if you wanna turn that on, you can experiment with that. But you should probably be the person that doesn't have sound on for their keyboard, uh, at least not in public settings. Now in mail, there's a couple new features. So one, if you long press the send button, you have the ability to send a message later. So you can schedule send it, that's huge. But then you can also, if you send an email, you have the ability to unsend it so you can see down at the bottom, it'll give you an undo send button, which you can click and it'll undo that send. And you can change how long it waits for you to do that in the mail settings. So you go to mail and you go down to undo send delay. You can be 10, 20 or 30 seconds, which is really great. Now for the first time in the battery settings, you can add a battery percentage to your power meter up top. So you can see it says 71 right there. So that's a new feature with iOS 16. Well, at least new as of the last few years. Of course, if you wanna see your battery health, you can go in there and see what percentage it is at. So now if you go into your photos, you can now see a new section called duplicates, which will allow you to see any images that the phone detects has or is a duplicate. So you can quickly get rid of things that are, well, duplicates and save some space. And you can also see the recently deleted folder now by default is locked. So you need to enter in your face ID to get to your recently deleted photos, which I think can make some sense. Now, if you wanna turn off that auto on display because you just don't want it to be on all the time and you just sometimes do want it to be black or you're trying to save battery, you can turn that off right there in your display and brightness settings. Now, one thing I always like to turn off, so if you go into your accessibility and you go into your display and text size, go all the way down and turn off auto brightness. That's something I like to do right away. So one thing I like to do in accessibility, which I think is a great feature, go down to accessibility shortcut and then turn on reduce white point. So we'll go ahead and triple click the power button on the right hand side and you can see the display just got really dark. We'll do that again and you can see it undid it. So this is reduced white point, which basically lets your screen get even darker than normal. So this is great for using it at night you can see it's almost pitch black. So you can use this so that you don't hurt your eyes as much when using your phone at night with just a triple click of your power button. So I think that's a really great feature. There have been a couple of new toggles added to Control Center, which of course Control Center is when you swipe down on your phone. So to customize these, you can go into Control Center and you can see these new options here. 
Now one of these is a quick note. So now you can go into your control center and quick note. So you launch that right away and you can start typing instead of having to open notes and then start a new document. So that's a really nice new feature in control center. There's a new feature now for call hang up. So you can tell Siri to end a call. So that's a new feature there. But that's about it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions about how to use this phone or any thoughts about it as well. So this works for your iPhone 14 Plus and your iPhone 14 Max. It should be the same experience for both of these devices.